Oh, it's only 17. Quick, guys. The quick, weight yeah. here is definitely yeah, a factor. Galvão, he Just cut a significant amount of weight for this match, Chase. We've uh, stop, been told that he right could here. he cool. cut somewhere in the region of Thank around about 11 or 12 back. pounds to hit the, the 170 limit. And uh, Takia actually came in way under at uh, around about 168 pound, cutting no weight whatsoever. So we'll see if that is a factor. But Takia has never shied away from a challenge. Does not matter the size of the opponent. Doesn't matter. He fought against brown and black belts when he was only a blue and purple belt and just without fear. Yeah, Tack is definitely one of the scrappiest competitors I had today. And uh, I'm curious to see how measured the approach might be. I don't know how long we'll stay like this before they start fighting like cats and dogs out there. Galvão. Well, he had one of the uh, the standout performances of the IBJJF Nogi uh, Pan Championships just very recently. He uh, he won his division there, uh, his first competition as a brown belt on American soil, and uh, well, four matches, three submissions, and those three submissions totaled a grand total of around about two and a half minutes of match time. He yep. is a submission sniper. 100%. And just looking at the match here, I'm liking uh, Tackett's use of the Wagner shoulder jab, if you will, that, that pawing motion of the palm, almost a palm strike to keep the distance there. Wagner employs that to great effect. It really gets in the mind and head of the uh, competitors. But Mika's probably always seen some of that as he's been training down there with Wagner and Cyborg and the guys at Fight Sports for a few weeks now. That is a great point, Chase, that, yeah, that uh, Galvao, he arrived here in the United States a couple of weeks ago, uh, him and his father, Melky, they have uh, been based at Fight Sports in Miami, training with Roberto Cyborg and the, the rest of the crew there. And uh, well, we've actually got plenty of training videos on the site. And look at that outside leg hook there into a front headlock here, possibly onto a. Whoa, I thought he's maybe on the neck, but with double overhooks and diving into what looked like a flying armbar of sorts. But man, this is the kind of thing that you can expect from Galvao. He is very unorthodox in his attacks, but he is clinical in his finishes. Absolutely, but this is a great position here for Andres. He stacks Mika in a good passing position. We're going to see just how good Mika's defenses are, and you can see he's going to squeeze oh, right out of that Beautiful position. use of the frame in the armpit there just to recover guard uh, relatively effortlessly. Maybe stop, got him. Wardrobe malfunction here. Fight! Good sportsmanship from Mika not to immediately take that moment, that pause to come up and wrestle. Look at the flexibility of the De La Hiva hook from Galvao on bottom, the way that he's able to get that right leg, the, the outside hook all the way through onto the inside of the thigh, now switching to the, uh, to the inside hook. But the dexterity, this shows that he's... Uh, well, we've seen his top game. We know that he's got phenomenal wrestling. He's a, he's a very good takedown artist, but this is a, it's rare to see him spend extended periods on his back and playing guard, Stop. because let's be honest, he's not that many back. people oh, are able go. to keep him there. That's true. It it's, should be noted that Mika is also a Lucha Livre black belt here. Uh, still brown belt in jiu-jitsu, but Lucha Livre, of course, being the, the Nogi-based submission grappling sport native to, to Brazil. How? Now look at this unusual coming up onto possibly the back is Galvao looking to roll through to a back take with the rear body lock now. He's got control of the hips. Can he get the hooks in? This is a very unorthodox sequence, but doesn't have complete control. But this is dangerous. If he can get a little higher on the back, he might be able to get an arm around the neck. He might be able to get those hooks in, but... What, a, what an unusual reversal from bottom, and Andrew Tackett now is in deep water. Yeah, the dexterity of, of Mika is really coming through here. Just incredible uh, it, it, just ability to take the back here. He's not quite fully secure, but he's in a great spot to do it. And they're both pretty dry still at this point, having hit the five-minute mark in this match. So this is a great moment for Mika to maybe capitalize, but Andrew may be out of danger. For oh, look at their reversal now. Galvao is coming up on top, and it looks like he's settling down into the side control as well. This is a very dominant position and this is going to afford him a lot of opportunity to attack this is not good for Tackett as, as Mika does not like to go backwards and you rarely see but Andrew may get uh, if he can slide his left leg a bit more in front but no Mika straight into the mount this could mm, big be pressure here very dangerous for Tackett here now we talked a little about the, uh, the the weight advantage this is where it comes into play because if Tackett didn't cut any weight for this match whatsoever whereas Galvao maybe cut 11, 12 pounds to hit that weight limit. I mean, come the day of the uh, of the match, he could be 15 pounds heavier. And when you're on top, 15 pounds is, oh, it's so much. It's, it's uh, It feels more than 15. Especially when you're talking about a chin on your face there right now. Now, let's see if, if Mika can isolate one of these arms. He's looking to do it right now, looking to isolate. Uh, it looks to be uh, Andrew's left arm. Sorry. You see in the corner, you see <laughs> William Tackett and Rodrigo Cabral. That is Andrew Tackett's older brother, William, in his corner. They're, uh, of course, based 
right here in Austin, Texas. The Tackett brothers, a, uh, a famous fighting family, and you can imagine that William very concerned with his brother at this stage, but right now that Galvao is just in, in, in such dominant position and such control, and yet he's not... He's not, uh, he's not giving up too much right now. He seems pretty patient in his strategy, and he uh, seems happy to, to take what Tackett is willing to give him. Yes, he's being very measured, very mature approach here as he switches from arm to arm and uh, Judge's really dominating favorite the blue pace at this here. stage. Yes, exactly, Judge's favor. Pretty clear, I would say, for Mika, hard to argue with that as he's taken the mount and secured it for a moment now. And I like how he's trying to pry up whatever arm he can take. Right now he's looking at Taka's left arm, but maybe he'll switch back to the right. He's just kind of cooking him, hoping to isolate one of these limbs and secure uh, an arm lock of some sort. Yeah, at this uh, stage, when you're in the mount, it's very difficult to attack somebody who is uh, completely shelled up. The idea is to try and get those elbows away from the upper body to try and create some separation there. But look at that. Now with the underhook and crossface, you see that Galvaro actually gives up the mount, goes to a knee ride, and then settles down into this side control position, because let's be honest, Takit wasn't giving anything away. And now it feels like, uh, like Galvao is maybe, he's, he's actually actively looking for something, and this is an opportunity for Takit to recover guard and possibly uh, stage a counter-attack of his own. What a scramble right there. Good, Beautiful good, escape good, there from Andrew Takit, coming into the top position, and now in a position to stamp his authority on this match. Yeah, that was very, very smart of Andrew to stay calm there, stay composed, not give away anything easy, and he was able to get back on top, which I'm sure he's happier about as he looks to go for this double unders pass again. But I'm wondering if we're going to see the pace ramp up. Both these guys can go forever. It's been very, very calm throughout, and I'm wondering if Andrew may be a little more eager to get something off in a quick manner here coming up in these next several minutes. You know, the one thing that I, 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 is really obvious to me so far from watching this match, Chase, is that Galvao, his expression has not changed. Whether he is in a bad spot and he's defending or whether he is in the attack it's just this expressionless look mouth closed breathing through his nose and just doesn't seem flustered by anything that, Gal, that, that Tackett is offering uh, so far and he just seems so calm Yes, absolutely. And, and you can see Tackett's trying to make this a little bit grittier. You know, he, he likes making the match a little ugly. Trying that's to his style, right? That's the style. That's the strategy. Is to really wear on somebody, start to maybe break them mentally. Tackett oh, said that. in his interviews that that's what he wanted to try and do. But Mika clearly is not phased at this point in time and has already led the way in this match out. You know, the one thing I got to say, though, I got to call this out. I respect this because Tackett has not taken a backward step. The moment that he came on top and he was able to escape that position, there was no retreat. There was no moment where, OK, let me catch my breath no he is straight on the attack and he is pouring on the pressure from this top position but he hasn't been he hasn't been successful yet in finding the key to Galvao's guard he hasn't been able to navigate his way past those obstacles and get into a control position that's very true and I think uh, Mika is has really made this the pace of this match what he wants it to be. He's really controlling it, he's sweeping uh, what he needs to, but he's not really upset about holding position on bottom for a little while, biding his time, as Andrew is really trying to force something. Mika, I think, is taking the game as it comes to him and waiting for the perfect moment here. And you look at this, you see the way that uh, the Tackett is knee slide passing, that he has his, instead of putting his knee on the floor, he puts it on the torso, and he was he was actually drawing Galvao to him. He was pulling on the back of the head to try and put the pressure on the sternum. Those are the kind of tactics you can expect from Tackett, because he does, he likes to just pour the pressure on his opponents. He likes to really put it on them. But let's be honest, this is not the same Andrew Tackett that we've seen in the past, because usually his matches, they're so fast, it is hard to keep up. But this is definitely a a slower pace and I would say that Galvao has done a very good job of, of slowing him down and really deciding the, the pace of this match. Yeah, absolutely. Andrew here in an interesting exchange as he almost gets a footlock attack and looks for the back in the same moment. But we reset here as Andrew again tries to go for this knee slice pass. Like you said, Mika remains unfazed by any of the aggression shown here from Tackett. Looks very calm, very happy to go into the exchanges. And uh, now he's <laughs> pushing back a bit on Andrew's face. Uh, this is going to be a chippy match home. Okay, so here's my question, Chase. Is that now as we're approaching the 10-minute mark in this match, you know, the judges will be asked once again who they favor at this stage and who they think is in control. Now, of course, uh, Tackett, he spent uh, the early part of the match in a very bad position. Galvao was clearly in control. But now at this stage, it is a little less clear as to who's in control because Galvao is, yes, comfortable, calm, and yet it is possibly Tackett is the one is actually dictating the pace here a little bit. I think that's a, that's a fair argument, but Mika hasn't really given up an inch, but Tackett is certainly pushing the pace, I would say, in the last five-minute period. Um, 
but yeah, he hasn't really gotten anywhere. I mean, he's so good at just recomposing his guard, resetting, and again, trying to initiate on his terms. And here we see in the inset, the, the, the box there in the corner, you can see on the left is Melky Galvao. That is Mika Galvao's father and coach, a very well-known and respected black belt from the city of Manaus. Manaus in Brazil, of course, home to many champions. There's something in the water in that city because they've called it the Dagestan of Brazil. It's where all the toughest guys in the world come from. It's like, if you were to list all the world champions in history, I'm not sure exactly how many come from Manaus, but the, it's proportionately ridiculous. There's so many of them, but judges favor blue once again, meaning that so far at this stage, they still consider that Galvao is leading this match. And look at that, very simple wrestle up from bottom and he directly into the top position. Nice spin out here from Taki, possibly onto a leg attack. That was interesting there, Hal. I don't know if you could hear it, but the judges right at the five minute mark said, go, go. And Mika immediately shot a takedown, reverse positions. It looks like they were biding their time, waiting for this moment. Mika's corner much more animated now. They want to see a lot of action in the last last five minutes. Look and, at that beautiful uh, look at the diving knee slice pass as well. I mean, this is, again, this is a very significant attack from Galvao. It's because the difference in the guard passing was that Tackett was only able to advance not even halfway and get close to getting control of that upper body. Galvao, every single one of his guard passes are near finishes. Look at this, straight into the mount again. again. Beautiful passing from Mika, really taking over the pacing of this match again. Looks like he took uh, that middle five minutes to sort of control the pace and, and control his own energy, but now he's in a dominant spot again. Let's see what he can do with it here. As you said, representing Fight Sports Miami and also Dream Arts in Manaus, Mikael Galvao has captured the attention of the Brazilian audience like few grapplers have. He is a legitimate superstar in Brazil. This kid, they've told everybody, look at him. He is going to be the next big thing. And I've got to say, judging by his performance so far at this stage, there's no exaggeration. No, he looks completely dominant and uh, a real treat to watch. You know, beautiful technique, not an ounce of wasted energy as he makes his way into the most dominant place in the two, which is the mount. Again, looks like he's trying to isolate an arm here. And I I'm wondering maybe if he's thinking a few steps ahead to the back. You know, it's really hard sometimes to finish someone no-gi from top, especially if they're shelling up and doing good defense. Uh, the back may be the next logical step if you cannot get the, what you're looking for on top. Now, let's be honest as well, Chase. Does this look like a 17-year-old in control right here? This looks like a veteran black belt. This looks like a, a, a person who has spent their entire lives training for this moment, and yet he is a... He is, of course, he's been doing jiu-jitsu since an incredibly young age, but he's a 17-year-old brown belt, and this is the level of skill all that he has to offer. Well, he certainly has been doing his whole life. He's an absolute machine, you know, been built for this um, and been training full time since probably he was, you know, 14 years old or something. And you know, his whole family do jujitsu because he mentioned his father, Melky, is a black belt, his mother is a brown belt, his sister is a brown belt. It is a fighting family. And you know that Manaus, of course, is uh, very rich in terms of the, uh, the amount of training partners who are able to put it on. And he's been making uh, great use of the, the, the let's call it the, the human resources that they have there at Fight Sports in Miami as well in, in training with those guys there and I've got to say that this is this is some next level stuff the control few people are able to put the pressure on Andrew Tackett in this manner but the great escape and now with two minutes remaining Tackett back in the match and this is a chance for him to say hey don't forget me I'm still in this match I've still got a chance here yeah you can never count out Tackett you know they're so game as he looks to take up a single leg here his coach is calling for all the energy he can give you know there's only two minutes left in this match let's go let's go but Mika, for his part, is not looking uh, like he lost a, a bit of energy. He looks completely fresh as he dives onto the back. Look at that transition, Hal. Incredible. Oh, possibly onto a triangle here. He seems to have got a high close guard. And they are very slippy. He may not be able to completely close this control position, but this is dangerous. Andrew Tackett at risk oh, of the arm bar. The arm bar almost gets the extension of the arm. One minute, 20 seconds remaining. And Andrew Tackett is still very much in this match, but my word, that is a statement from Galvao. You cannot leave anything hanging out I need there. to see that sequence again because that was absolutely insane. What, what a match. Tackett definitely flagging somewhat now. This is Mikhail Galvao has got one more minute to work. Can he finish the match? I mean, he's come close now, but Tackett, at the, this point, they're so drenched, they're so slippery. I gotta say, man, it's gonna be like holding an eel. It's gonna be so difficult to actually get control, but that doesn't stop Tackett from trying. Look at that. Nice exchange from Tackett. Almost got the takedown, but they're both a little bit tired now, looking to reset on the feet. Oh my god, I did not know what to expect from this match, but it certainly delivered.
Tackett jumps oh. through and a nice guard interception there from Mikhail Galvao. Gets past, lands in the side control, has got a deep underhook. He could potentially finish the match. He's still got 20 seconds left to work. A somewhat of a strategic error, a little um, enthusiastic there from Tackett in trying to throw up the flying attack and... Galvao is going to ride out this match. Oh, he's, he's, he's actually playing an arm. arm. This could be it. Arm. He's got nine seconds, seven seconds to work. Can he get the finish? He's going for the armbar. Takin is desperately trying to defend. Saved by the bell is Andrew Takin. But what an incredible who's number one debut from Mikhail Galvao. And I think there is no question of the judge's decision at this point. But... Let's go through, let's follow the protocol, let's get the official result from the judges. I will, I will be very surprised if it's anything less than blue across the board, but you know, man, what an amazing performance oh there from Galva. Yeah. And a great display of respect there from Andrew Tackett. A formality at this point, I feel that it is blue across the board for the winner, Mikael Galvao. And your winner, out of the blue corner, representing...